I've actually spent a lot of the past couple of years reflecting on impermanence and like things constantly changing. <laughs> yeah. um, love your background. Um, and part of, part of that was because right before I was kind of getting ready to do my dissertation, I lost a friend who was very close to me, who was also, I had been in a relationship for many years as well. I lost them suddenly. I didn't, you know, I didn't get a chance um, to say goodbye where they could respond to me. So, um, and it, so I, I was grieving and I'm, I'm still, I don't think you ever really stop grieving when you're like really close to someone like that. Um, it just, it just changes, but it made me very aware. And I think of it, it heightened my fear of things constantly changing. When am I going to lose someone again? You know, and everything for a while felt like, okay, when's the next loss coming? And it's, it's hard especially when you're going through the grieving process, not to see change as only a process of loss, you know? Um, and for that not to make you sometimes like terrified. So, um, and I realized at one point that, that partly I needed to change my relationship with what my how my friend was still present in my life. That, that it was different now and it was never gonna be the same again where I could have that kind of like embodied interaction with them. But, um, but memories that would come up of encouragement that he had given me and um, ways that he had made me feel about myself and and kindnesses that he had given as well as kindnesses that I had expressed to him like they were still they were still influencing my life and at, so, at some point what changed for me was learning to embrace that change and without it being like you know it didn't have to be embracing the difficult parts of losing of losing him or, or saying that it was a good thing that it had, of course not, you know, like, um, but learning to almost like embrace the memories in a sense and to embrace how they were still, those memories in a very real kind of like embodied sense were still part of, they were still alive in that sense that they were influencing me. So, so partly with like changing my, my relationship to grieving can, can help you change your relationship to impermanence of all kinds because we are I mean in terms of things constantly changing the pandemic in terms of even of how what our education is going to look like what teaching is going to look like from day to day was constantly changing and learning to kind of settle with that and adapt with that and trust that whatever happens you know you can you can adapt and you're still there you know <laughs> you're still um we're still alive, we're still responding to it. But the other thing that I think I've, the reason why I've been reflecting on impermanence so much is um, I was partly influenced by a lot of conversations I have with a loved one um, who gave me permission um, to share that um, over the past, I don't know, 10 or 15 years or so, we have talked about impermanence, um, especially as it relates to mindfulness, because mindfulness is um, part of a mindfulness practice is learning to remember and embrace impermanence um, to kind of like, it's almost a practice of accepting how things are changed and being curious about how they're gonna change, as well as being open to how they might change. So um, that loved one that I've, you know, have a very strong relationship with has shared how much that practice has helped them with um, both depression 
and suicidal thoughts. So, um, and what they would often experience when they were in some of those darkest moments of, of despair was a mindset and even like a physiological and psychological process that makes you think that things are always going to be this way. Um, you know, you mentioned earlier, we were, uh, we were talking kind of off script about that earlier that people had different reasons for having suicidal thoughts, but for many, for at least for this, for this person, um, being in that mindset was partly about not being able to even fathom that things would be different from how they felt in those darkest moments. Um, so once they began practicing kind of an openness to, well, let's see what tomorrow looks like. We don't know. I don't know what life might bring me and it might not look like what I think it's supposed to look like kind of like letting life surprise you and having that curiosity about where it's going to come from um changed incredibly for them like no longer having suicidal thoughts and also largely helping with their depression and I've I've taken those those lessons myself to to manage my own depression and moments of um sadness or despair and it's kind of like I remember my own the own story that same story I keep telling people of you know having someone in the gym class who I never really talked too much like the the helper um come asking me how I was feeling when I was feeling really down um or or a student I remember a student I was having a hard day once and they noticed and I remember them sharing a heart <laughs> with their with their hands one day and and just kind of being surprised by like you you don't know you don't know when you're going to find kindness and you don't know where it's going to come from sorry <laughs> um could be could be an animal could be a stranger like um and you also you know in terms of thinking your life is supposed to look a certain way you just don't know you don't know what it's going to look like but you can if you kind of surrender to that unknown and let it surprise you kind of like be more open to that change your relationship to impermanence um I think can really make life a little bit easier <laughs> and and uh and and so I try I try to share that with students because I think too that I know a lot of them are dealing with depression and dealing with the difficulty of trying to grapple with all this uncertainty um, so I think helping them realize that impermanence can bring a lot of pain and loss and suffering, but it can also kind of in a balancing way bring things that um, can help you feel hopeful and help you experience kindness as well. Yeah. 